Alrighty, good morning guys. Uh, today I'm super excited to talk about the Panthera e-start. Um, so today we're gonna get the bike torn down. We're gonna go ahead and install it and hopefully we'll get the uh, first start. Favorite ratchet ever and the only snap-on tool I own. Discontinued F731A. So we've got the uh, bike torn down, seat off, had to uh, loosen up my radiators and radiator braces to get to the <coughs> coil pack wires. Also removed some of the old wiring I had for my battery powered setup. If you'd like to check that up, there's a card uh, right above right now. You can check out how I used to run this without a the upgrade kit from Panthera. So now we're gonna have to uh, clean this out, install the new stator. We'll check to see if there's spark. And then it'll be all about getting the RTV joint on this really good. Um, a lot of people are having issues where oil is coming out of this or the wires. I don't want to have those issues. So the key here is to get it right the first time, take your time, really get a lot of RTV in there, make sure it's a good seal. So once there's oil in there, it's just going to be a nightmare to get it to seal up. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into that. We have the Panthera stator. So I've actually decided to go ahead and take it out um, to RTV around these wires. I've heard of some people having oil come up and through this, and I'd rather not deal with that. So we're gonna. Go ahead and RTV all up around these wires before uh, it's all in there. And I think that'll be a lot easier. You just really don't want to have a leak. That just sounds like a nightmare. Beautiful. The adhesive, and pop this open. Totally sponsored by Permatex. Speak up this cable and through this cable. So we're gonna go ahead and goop it around here. Really get it pushed in there. One of those things where you keep going and it's like, man, how much more silk can I really fit in there? So uh, while the RTV is drying, we're gonna go ahead and uh, jump around and start working on the air box, um, get this cleaned up, and then put the battery box in and start running the wiring. Okay, so it's pretty clean in there. Straight there you good anyways. So let's go ahead and grab the battery box here. There's the battery box. We have a uh, regulator rectifier here, AC to DC uh, power, and then also regulates the voltage to, I don't know, like 14 volts I think it is for lithium charging, 13, 14. And we have the starter relay with an extra fuse there, which is pretty nice. Flop her in. And the other thing I noticed earlier is that I had a hard time getting the battery in, just test fitting it. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen these up touch and scoot it over to the uh, to the left. Forgot to mention. And uh, this particular battery box is actually optioned for the four cell battery. <coughs> That's an anti-gravity XPS SC4, I believe. Um, so there's two options. You can get an eight cell or four cell. Sebastian, the uh, gentleman that uh, designs this and uh, sells it. He recommended when uh, my dad was on a phone call with him that go the four cell, lighter, smaller, a little easier to change the air filter. So that's what we did. Nice tight. Sweet, that's that. Now we gotta get the battery in there and then figure out how all these wires go around. 
I pulled it out of the package and I, was, I knew it was going to be a small battery. So yeah, XPS SC1. This is the four cell option as opposed to the uh, eight cell two amp hours. But anyway, I went to pull it out and it's like, what? How is that possible? And this thing is just tiny. You can see, positive on the uh, left side of the bike looking forward. And then the, uh, the relay has the red part on uh, my side, outboard this way. Um, then you can pop this uh, wire on right here, this one, this other positive cable, and then these can go over to the negative side. So a little bit more fiddling here, and then it'll be all set. So we've got the wires going through right down here. So we gotta take a razor blade to this edge or a file, just make sure that it's uh, deburred. This edge feels good, so. Uh, I heard somebody was having issues with his touching the bar and shocking them. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put a little piece of electric tape on that. So this video is kind of not only the directions from uh, Sebastian, but also everything I've learned from uh, reading the forums for a few days while I was waiting to get it. Give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe. Might even take it off. Uh, what is this weird fear that I'm gonna break the starter switch or the kill switch? And uh, <laughs> once the kill switch is broken, like, won't bike won't run. Just me, probably. So we have the stator put back in uh, and we're going to go ahead and RTV this joint, which lines up there. Uh, it's already been break clean, so just carefully, because this art, other RTV hasn't set yet because I'm being impatient. I might regret hugely. Here, we'll see. Uh, there's some RTV around the outside, inside, and in the groove. Just put the stator in. Perfect. So that was uh, checking the pickup coil. Yeah. Mine was about half a millimeter, and they say within. So, all right, so now we are putting on the main ring gear. Slots in just like that, and the uh, clutch that engages is just in there. And this is actually what bolts the flywheel on. All right, so we got the cover on with the starter motor. The gears are not installed and the silicone is drying. It's all tacked up at this point, but we're gonna give it a full overnight cure time, maybe even longer, we're gonna see in the morning, see what uh, it feels like. In the meantime, we'll go ahead and throw some of these wires on. Okay, so I've been messing with this wiring for quite a while now, and I am taking it all apart. And in a second here, I will have it all done, and I will show you what I believe to be the best, cleanest wire routing for this. If you follow this the first time, you shouldn't have to do it three or four times like I have. So, let's give it a go. Okay, this was one of the most difficult parts <laughs> so far, and it's just because I went back and forth and tried to get it as clean as possible. So, let's go through it real quick. So. 
First and foremost, the big pack of cables that comes from the battery. Um, underneath the swing arm, and then behind the throttle cable, clutch cable, and throttle position sensor. I think this is the best looking cleanest setup. Then the two cables that go down to the starter motor, positive and negative, down right by the uh, power valve outlet, around, and then I put the straight to the positive, and then around. The breather hose follows the power valve drain valve drain hose up, then follows the starter motor cables up, then follows the clutch and throttle cable up around, and then down the front edge of the radiator right next to the um, coolant coolant overflow hose. So the stator cables follow the original path um, on my bike. The um, Coil pack for the spark plug is right here between the radiators. I think that's a newer thing. Later model bikes, I think it's like 2016 plus, 2018 plus, something like that. Um, so the yellow cable, that the two yellow cables that terminate in a connector follow right along the frame line there. They don't go behind this radiator mount. And then I actually put them in this rubber boot. Like I said, I think that this is a newer thing. I didn't have it on my old 250 uh, or YZ250. Um, but that one was a 2005, so I'm not sure what year um, this catches on, but I actually snaked it through this boot. Uh, the boot's just there for uh, making sure no water splashes on the connectors. The connectors are all really nice. Um, they have their own seals in them, but, you know, it's kind of nice, and I think it's a little cleaner. Um, yeah, so in there there's three connectors, this two yellow wire one, the stock coil pack one that went to the stator, and the neutral position switch. It is a bit of a pain getting them all in there. It's really tight, but I thought it was worth it. And then I just ran the starter cable up, you know, along the same lines, and I put my starter button on the left side. Uh, a lot of hard enduro guys do it that way because it's a little easier to reach over the grip than it is to reach over the throttle tube. Uh, lots of little zip ties, super clean. Uh, I think that this is about the best you can do as far as clean wire routing, so I'm pretty happy with that. Took me a while messing around, but super stoked. Everything looks really good, and as you might have heard, the motor is spinning. I'm gonna hold off on filling it with uh, ATF, 250 milliliters ATF until tomorrow, letting the, uh, um, the silicone appears to be nice and dry. It says full cure in 24 hours, but we gave it almost 12, so I think we should be good. I really want to get this thing going, so uh, let's get the oil in, put those gears in, and then uh, give it a go. It says ATF is uh, the best. We got some really old Chevron ATF, Dextron 3. I put a tiny little bit of grease on there. So far, so good. So the uh, air filter wasn't actually that bad. Um, I could see it being a lot worse with a eight cell battery. This is a four cell battery. Um, once again, we'll see if that's enough. I'm hoping it is when we get lights and a fan on. So after riding with the dead. Panther E-Start for a little bit, um, this seems to be normal behavior. Turns it over. At That's first it's a little unsettling that it won't spin the bike over super fast and start it right away. But it seems that you have to want to start the bike if that makes any sense. So you can't just sit there and crank it over. Um, not really sure why that is, but I can tell you that it starts first try almost every time and is really fast. All right guys, that's been the install of the Panthera electric start on my 2020 YZ250X. Um, I think this is gonna be a really big upgrade for me. I'm super excited about it with all the hard enduro I've been riding and racing. I am super stoked. Uh, I don't think that you need an electric start. 
but having it, I can't deny is a big advantage. So that's that. Now let's talk about the build quality of the Panther Electric Start. Uh, I'm really thankful that a company actually came out and made this. It's really cool. Uh, when Yamaha hasn't done it yet, this is just amazing. So let's talk about the build quality. Wiring harness, battery, all the mechanical bits are of really good quality. I am super impressed. The first few videos I saw, they had some little issues and I was a little bit worried, but I can't complain about any of the quality. The only nitpicking part I'll say on the wiring harness is the electric start connector into the harness. It's just not the same quality as the other ones. Not sure why. All the other ones have uh, waterproof connectors, that one doesn't. And if the electric start button fails, so does the rest of the unit. So maybe pack some dielectric grease in there and you'll be ready to rip. The really exciting thing I saw is that they are fixing problems from earlier models. So if you watch Highland Cycles first video or a couple of the others, they have problems with oil creeping up the clutch cable from pressure building up and they also have some electrical issues right off the bat. They fix this by adding a secondary ground to the ground to the bottom of the starter coil and that is already integrated into this wiring harness. Awesome to see. The other thing is that uh, breather hose and fitting is now included with the kit uh, ready to rock and roll. So they are fixing the issues that they're seeing and from what I've heard, they have great customer service. And Sebastian got back to one of my questions really quickly. The directions were pretty easy to follow. I definitely recommend following a video too. I watched Highland Cycles whole series. I watched a couple other videos of people installing them and you just pick up a few tips along the way. Biggest tip is get that silicone in there really good. Make sure you got a really tight connection because you don't want that leaking. Once there's oil in there, it's gonna be way harder to get it to seal. Second thing is if you do wanna follow my wiring placement or if you have any questions about my wiring placement, I think this is a really good way to wire it. It's super clean. It doesn't take up any more space. You know, it looks good. Um, and you can follow this and get it right the first try. It took me five or six tries and two hours to uh, route all those wires around to get them really clean and uh, tidy. Thanks for watching. I'll have a video about my first ride with the Panther up soon in X amount of hours, probably 50 or 100 hours. I will update you guys on the reliability or any issues I've had with it. Uh, if something does come up, I'll probably make a video sooner, but so far everything seems beautiful. So if you'd like to check out some epic snow biking, hit that card there. Thanks for watching today. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Hope to see you guys again soon. We've got some epic hard enduro content coming for the West Coast American hard enduro series. So go ahead and tune in for that and I will see you guys out on the trails.